The first beta of KDE Plasma 6.6 .6 has been released as a public preview of the desktop environment's planned February 17th stable release. The changes are many, but here are the most important ones. Above all, this version includes three new foundational modules. Plasma Login Manager, a replacement for the SDDM Display Manager. Plasma Keyboard, introducing a new virtual keyboard implementation. Plasma Setup, a wizard designed for out-of-the-box and OEM system initialization. On the widget and panel front, Plasma 6.6 .6 adds several user-facing enhancements. Users can now create global themes from their current visual settings, making customization easier. Connectivity is streamlined with Wi-Fi network access via QR code scanning, and the Emoji Selector app gains a preferred skin tone filter. New interaction patterns include changing task volume by scrolling and global media actions for seeking forward or backward in media playback. The window list widget gains advanced filtering and hover behavior, while the lock slash logout widget offers configurable icon ordering. A new wired network configuration widget expands networking control directly on the desktop. Visual and style improvements focus on consistency and modern dialog layouts. The XDG portal dialogs are visually overhauled, and Kirigami-based apps receive refined list margins and toolbar spacing, aligning more closely with broader desktop UI conventions. Another novelty, which I am personally very excited about, is that Plasma 6.6 .6 introduces user-configurable controls for the intensity and contrast of frame borders around windows, panels, and other interface elements. This long-awaited option lets users make borders more subtle or more pronounced enhancing both aesthetics and accessibility on Breeze-themed desktops. On the accessibility side, Plasma 6.6 .6 implements slow key support in Wayland sessions, helping users with motor impairments by requiring configurable key press durations. Plus, Plasma's zoom effect now offers an always-centered pointer mode, and new grayscale and intensity controls support users with visual sensitivities. Additionally, Support for the standard XDG Reduce Motion setting allows users to minimize animation system-wide. System changes extend from device integration to everyday usability. Spectacle Screenshot tool now includes OCR, and screen recording can exclude specific windows. Plasma 6.6 .6 also implements a USB portal for sandboxed applications, automatic brightness adjustment on systems with ambient light sensors, and support for direct font installation through Discover on compatible distributions. Quality of life improvements include crash reporting for non-KDE applications and enhanced input device support that treats game controller activity as system activity, preventing unwanted lock or sleep conditions. And now something very useful. Plasma 6.6 .6 introduces improved screen mirroring support, making it more reliable in Wayland sessions alongside custom screen mode capabilities via the Screen Doctor tool. On top of that, the KWIN window manager gains X11 Randar emulation support under Wayland, enhancing integration with X Wayland applications that rely on legacy resize and rotate APIs. Behind the scenes, performance and efficiency enhancements address long-standing issues. Finally, idle memory usage is reduced, specific memory leaks are resolved, and animations run smoother on high refresh rate displays. The Wayland session also benefits from broader hardware integration and refinement, improving responsiveness and consistency across modern Linux systems. So what's next? A second beta is expected on January 27th, with the final stable release scheduled for February 17th. The Wine Project, a compatibility layer that enables Linux and macOS users to run Windows applications, has officially released version 11.0. The headline change is the completion of the new WoW 64 architecture, which is now fully supported and considered feature complete. First introduced experimentally in Y9.0, the new WoW 64 mode now supports 16-bit Windows applications, removes the separate Y64 loader in favor of a single unified loader, and deprecates pure 32-bit prefixes created with WineArch equals Win32. Existing 64-bit prefixes can be forced into the new mode by setting WineArch equals WoW64. Another major improvement is NT-Sync support, which allows Wine to use the Linux kernel's NT-Sync module when available. 
Starting with Linux kernel 6.14, this significantly improves the performance of Windows synchronization primitives, reducing overhead in multi-threaded applications and games. Wine 11.0 also adds thread priority handling on Linux and Mac OS, along with new synchronization barriers in NTLL. At the kernel interface level, Wine 11.0 introduces NT reparse points, supporting mount points and symbolic links, and improves write watch handling on Linux by using userfalft when available. NT system calls now follow modern Windows syscall numbering, improving compatibility with applications that rely on hard coded values. On ARM64 systems, Wine can now simulate a 4K page size on hosts with larger pages, though a native 4K kernel remains recommended for demanding workloads. Graphics and rendering see broad improvements. As Wine 11.0 removes its dependency on OS Mesa, switching OpenGL bitmap rendering to a hardware-accelerated OpenGL runtime. EGL is now the default OpenGL backend on X11, with GLX deprecated but still available as a fallback. Regarding Vulkan support, Wine 11.0 now supports Vulkan API version 1.4.335, implements several Windows-specific Vulkan extensions, and improves OpenGL buffer handling in the new WoW 64 mode via Vulkan when available. Desktop integration has also been refined. Wine 11.0 improves interaction with X11 window managers using EWMH, adds exclusive full-screen support, and enhances full-screen handling for older deck draw titles. The experimental Wayland driver now supports shaped and color-keyed windows, the clipboard, input methods, and improved performance via shared memory communication between processes. Direct 3D support expands further, including hardware-accelerated H.264 decoding via Direct 3D 11 video APIs over Vulkan Video, new sampler filtering features, and a large set of legacy Direct 3D features now supported by the Vulkan renderer. While Vulkan is still not the default renderer, bundled updates to VKD 3D, shader improve compatibility with older shader Model 1, 2, and 3 applications. Wine 11.0 also brings notable progress across input devices, Bluetooth, scanning, multimedia, direct music, and .NET related components. Highlights include better gamepad and force feedback support, initial Bluetooth pairing, and Bealy get support on Linux using BlueZ, a full Twain 2.0 implementation for scanners, improved multimedia pipelines, and expanded WinRT and WPF functionality. Finally, Additional updates touch debugging tools, built-in Windows utilities, development infrastructure, and bundled third-party libraries. The release also improves build performance, expands ARM64 CI coverage, and updates key components, including VKD3D, F-Audio, FluidSynth, and LibPing. For more information, visit the announcement. Wine 11.0 source code can be downloaded from GitLab's project page for those interested in trying out or upgrading their current installation. The binary packages for various distributions are expected to be available shortly. Mozilla has released Thunderbird version 147 of its widely adopted free and open source desktop email client, now available for download. One of the most visible additions is a new show full path option for the folder pane when using compact view modes. This makes it easier to navigate complex mail setups by displaying the full folder hierarchy instead of truncated names. Alongside this, Thunderbird 147.0 introduces a new preference, mail.use localized folder names, allowing users to control whether special folder names are localized. In addition, special folders are now localized using a restricted and more predictable set of names. On the bug fixes side, multiple issues affecting folder handling have been resolved, including failures when compacting several folders at once, incorrect names in unified archive subfolders, and display problems with deep folder hierarchies or long folder names. Search behavior has also seen notable improvements. Problems where searches fail to complete due to unparsable local folders have been addressed, and search widgets now correctly display selected status and priority. 
Plus, the settings menu search has also been corrected so that queries for attachments properly surface the relevant options. Regarding stability fixes, several crash scenarios have been eliminated, including crashes during exchange account setup, when marking all messages as read, and when emptying the EWS trash. Startup performance has improved, too, for users with many folders who do not rely on subscriptions, reducing launch delays. On the Exchange Web Services and SMTP handling side, Thunderbird now correctly prompts for passwords when required during EWS message sending, handles HTTP 500 backoff errors more gracefully, and avoids hangs when multiple messages are queued for SMTP delivery. Additionally, account creation via OAuth 2 for EWS now properly reports errors when setup fails. Finally, other fixes address open PGP signed message handling, blocked RSS feed updates due to broken icons, calendar alerts for connection issues, and the inability to create tasks with start or due dates. Users of the Japanese locale will also benefit from a fix that restores the ability to create message filters.